me already. I've been in technology education business for 25 years now. <laughs> uh, it's kind of funny that tonight is the road back to 80s, because I started teaching in Emporia High School in 1987. I taught there for a year, and then my husband bought a computer company. And I was teaching AppleWorks classes um, to a lot of the teachers in the area at that time as my summer job. Um, does anybody here remember AppleWorks? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so when I, when I first got into technology was in 1986-87 is when I actually was, was doing all this. And we've been around for a long time. Two Trees has in a lot of different forms. Um, we used to sell Apple computers a long time ago. Now we do a lot of high-end networking. Um, like I said, I see some clients in here we do. A lot of people know us for internet filtering. Um, I was talking to a client yesterday, and one of the very first things that I ever sold was IBM's writing to read. And for 25 years, I still had people, I had a school in Texas yesterday call and order writing to read work journals. We still sell the workbooks that you do that. That is frankly the only product that has stayed the same <laughs> over 25 years, and that's because, you know, any elementary teachers here? Phonics works, <laughs> that's, and it's a phonics program. And, uh, and there's still quite a few schools that use it. So in other words, I've been around the block a few times. Um, and throughout the years, we have worked with different products, different educational products. Some of them I look at and I see them as a flash in the pan. Some of them I look at and go, oh, that, I think that's something the schools really could use. And my next question always to a vendor is, how much is it? Is it affordable to the schools? Um, and that's, I don't pick it up unless you can afford it and it's going to add value to what you're doing in the classroom. So I'm going to talk about Phronics Insight today. That's one of them I just picked it up a couple months ago. If any of you have never heard of Phronics, they're a management, technology management company. They've been around since 1996. Um, they have over 30,000 customers in 150 countries. They're based in Canada, um, but they also have this in the USA and the UK. Um, they create, their main product that they create is called Deep Freeze. Does anybody here have Deep Freeze? Yeah. Yeah. The Deep Freeze is excellent if you want a sandbox lab for your students to play in. Um, you put Deep Freeze on the computer and you freeze it. And so that's the configuration you want the computer to stay at. Then they can go out to the internet and they can download wherever they want. They can change the background screensaver. They can get into viruses. They can, you know, they can do whatever they want. And then when you reboot the computer, it takes it back to that frozen state. So it takes it back to your original configuration. Um, so that way, you as a teacher can, you know, you aren't worried about or the IT director, so the people a lot of times that put this in. It lets the machines, they can do whatever they want on the machines. It always goes back to the way you set it at the beginning. So it doesn't save any of those system changes. So it's a very good product. And a lot of school districts do use that. Um, they have their NI executable, which we have been messing with a lot lately, because you can set certain files not to execute on, and this is this is both for Windows and Mac machines. You can set the file so that it doesn't execute. And a real good example is Two Trees' main business is internet filtering, and there's a particular um, program that you can use to get around filters. It's called UltraSurf. And what UltraSurf does is an executable file that you can download from anywhere. Just go out and search for it on the internet. And it creates what's called a VPN tunnel back to a server so you can get around anybody's filter. The only way to stop UltraSurf is to stop it at the firewall. You have to close that port at the firewall. The problem is it's the same port that iTunes uses. It's the same port that Skype uses. It's the same port. It's all the stuff that you're using in the classroom. So most school districts don't close that port. They can't. Um, so we can show the school districts through our filtering services that students are getting around the filter. We can't show them where they're going because they're getting around the filter. But we can say, these machines have UltraSurf on them, so maybe you get to track them down from there. So, and I do have some school districts that close those ports, like Edmond Public Schools in Oklahoma close them. Uh, what you can do with, long story short, <laughs> Uh, what you can do with the NI executable is you can load that on the machine and it will stop UltraSurf from loading. 
because it's, it will stop that executable file from loading and creating that connection. So, and we tested it um, all this summer and it works very well. So if you're having problems with students downloading or plugging in USB drives or whatever and loading apps, and an executable stops that from happening on your workstations. Um, they also have a power save where you can shut all the machines off from the district at a certain time of day. So like at five or six o'clock at night, <laughs> down at Derby School District, they have a power saving program that they use. And they shut all the machines off about 7.30. That's when they, shut, they make sure all the machines in the whole district are shut off because they're all connected. Um, first month they used it, they shut all the, it gives a warning, then it shuts it down about 10 minutes later. It was during a board meeting. To shut all the board members' <laughs> laptops off. So there's some little things to think about <laughs> when, you're, when you're doing things like that. But you know, in bigger districts, like the district the size of Derby, that saves a lot of power because there's a lot of labs that might get left on, a lot of teacher machines that might get left on, and it's significant savings. And you can track it with their your PC power management. It tells you how many machines are shut off and what wattage those machines were. Um, so it's a good little thing. So that's kind of the stuff they work with. It's really not teacher stuff, it's more IT <laughs> based stuff. But the insight is lab control for teachers, um, or controlling the computers and the computer use in the classroom. Um, like I said, I've been doing this since 1987, and that was one of my best selling products back in the day, back in 88, 89, was a program called Land School. Did anybody ever heard of Land School? Yeah. 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 Insight is very much like Land School, mm -hmm. and it's actually based on that same technology. Mm -hmm. They actually license the technology from Land School for Insight. So if you're familiar with Land School, you'll see some similarities here. This is what it does. Well, part of, you know, part of the challenge in the classroom is keeping the kids engaged. <laughs> and I have also seen the um, pendulum swing back and forth between the classroom computers being managed by the IT director, they want to manage everything from the top down, versus the teacher manage it in the classroom itself, because it's her lab, her computers. And especially with one-to-one -one initiative, that's got to be, I think, the pendulum swinging back the other way, because it's just too much work for the IT director to have to manage all the 600 machines out there. The classroom teacher's the one that's using it on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's why this tool is meant for the classroom teacher. But what it does kind of addresses some of the challenges of, of if the students all have iPads or they all have laptops that they are doing other things on the iPad while you're trying to talk to them and give them instruction and to get their attention and to monitor what they're doing and keeping them on task. You know, are there people in here that have one to one initiatives? You could say that's the biggest challenge. You always talk about messing around or, or working. The power start when the school gets started. We are just now giving our students. Oh, you're just so. starting. Okay, so <laughs> how about you, Molly? Can you share? Is that a challenge in the classroom? You hear from the teacher saying that? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. That's a. Sorry, I'm going to pick on you because I know you. <laughs> Sorry. So, what the Insight does, there's two portions of it there's the student application and the teacher application. The teacher control will allow the teacher to view a thumbnail of all the students' screens on their machine. So if you're on a Macintosh um, laptop or a Windows laptop from the, from the teacher computer, you can see a thumbnail, and I'll show you what it looks like, a thumbnail of everybody's screen. So you can see actually what they're doing on their computers. And for you tech people in the room, I see there are some in here, it's very, it has the lowest overhead in any of the type of monitoring programs that are out there. So it doesn't take up much bandwidth. That's always a concern. So you can see what they're running, and you can monitor their keystrokes. You can stop applications um, on, on a Mac laptop or a Windows laptop. If you see them doing something you don't want them to be doing, you can freeze their screen. Okay. If they're on an iPad, you can at this time, <laughs> you can't see their iPad screens. You know, so you can't see the iPad apps because Apple doesn't allow them to run a background application. For those of you that have had iPads, you know that you can't run <laughs> two apps at one time. So they won't allow them to do that. Now Apple has promised in the next iOS that that could be a possibility. So as soon as that happens, since Apple allows it, this application will be able to do that. 
But what you can do with iPads specifically is the other piece. That's what the thumbnails look like. Uh, teacher screen in Windows, teacher screen on a Mac. This is a teacher screen on the iPad. So you can not view students' iPads, but if you have a Mac lab or a Windows lab and the teacher has an iPad, you can view their screens on your iPad. That way you can be up on the ground doing stuff and you can see what people are doing. So the teacher control part is available on the iPad. For students, or yeah, for the student side, what you can do with the iPad app is you can do the quizzing and testing. Um, so like if you have the clicker things, it's very similar to that, but you can throw all that away and do it with your iPads. So you can do the testing and type the test questions in. I'm going to show you that here in a second. And then you do know, for example, is that there's a little iPad app, you can load it up, and it says the student um, inside is up on their screen. And you can send them their test question or whatever. Or there's also chat, so you can chat with them from your iPad to their iPad. You can type a message to that student. If the student leaves the inside app, it frosts over on the screen. So you do know that if they're not taking their test or if, they, <laughs> or if they're not talking to you, because that screen will go blank on your screen. Well, it's called frost over, so it'll go gray. Right. Um, on the Windows and Macs, you can limit what they see on the web in the classroom as a teacher. You can limit what applications they have access to. You can stop them from printing. Um, you can stop them from stating things on the hard drives if you want to. Um, you can um, actually blank their screens, like I said before, if they're not, whole class isn't paying attention, you can hit a button to select all the students, and all their screens freeze, which is really handy, it'll like, you know, grab everybody's attention. Or, I'll show you here in a little bit, you can do that individually for each student. You also can do, we've talked about audio chat, broadcast, you can do messaging, um, and you can ask the students questions in a quiz format. Or you can actually, you know, I chat them a question or chat them a question and they can chat back to you using the application. This is what the teacher management screen looks like. This is what didn't work before, so. Okay, this is it live. That was just a screenshot. This is it live. And so if you, as a teacher, wanted to show your screen to everybody in the classroom, you would click on show teachers full screen. Um, if you wanted to show another student's screen to all the rest of the students, you could do that. If you wanted to run a video file, if you wanted to start a program on a student machine, if you want to still browse the internet, um, create a test, ask students to vote. You can see all the different, it's very easy. Once you import the class in, um, it's very easy to just work with the menus and pull it down. Yeah. So now this stuff only works if it's a one-to-one -one with laptops, right? No, it can no. work with labs. This, all of these things work Straight with iPads as well. Yeah. It was actually designed for labs. No, no I mean iPads. Because oh. we're going one-to-one -one with iPads, okay. so right. can I do right. these things with the iPad as the well? The only ones you can do with the iPads right now are the create a test and ask the students to vote. Okay. That's the only with, on the student side. Okay. The, teacher, the teacher <coughs> control it with but she can't manage iPads. Yeah, I can't, yeah, because yeah, we're she going can't one to screens. Yeah. yeah, we're going one to one with iPads. Right, right. But you said that, with, so when is Apple, are they supposed <laughs> to be producing that new iOS? I mean, I understand that Apple's kind of funky. The, the, nobody knows. And yeah. those are rumors, you know, it's all rumors until you actually yeah. see it. Supposedly, and we're an Apple developer, so, I mean, not just Veronix, but also yeah. Two Trees is an Apple developer. Might be And October. they still don't tell us. You yeah, know, nobody pay, knows. You know, $5, maybe. $5, rumor is October, maybe. But. <laughs> It could be a year, year Well, because they kind of but trend when things come out. So, because I was thinking June and October. Right. Is that right? June and October usually right. when they're And I'm, I'm expecting it'll be next October before that piece. Yeah, not this October. Mm -hmm. How do you know which machine on the thumbnails is which season? Mm -hmm. yeah. Do they have like a number? Or yeah, you can do names. Okay. Let me show you real quick, like you can, how easy it is to create a test or ask the students to vote. So you just type your question in, load your question, if it's true or false, multiple choice, if you want them to send it out, how many students responded, you know, mm -hmm. like if you use the pictures already. Right. I just want to show you that. So can you 
can you plan all those questions ahead, or do you have to do that right then on the spot? No, you can do them ahead. Yeah, I can show you this. I, I can create a test, and you can open one. You can already look, you know, load it and open it instead of doing it from scratch. Forgot your question already. Oh, just how do you know loading you students? <laughs> Okay, this is the first time I've presented this. It's brand new to us. And I did have it all working yesterday in the office on the iPads to do the teacher and the voting and stuff like that. But you have to be on the same network for tech people. So I would have to have created a whole network um, here in order to demonstrate it, which was my plan is to actually have you guys have iPads and actually I could show you how the students are managed and stuff. Um, but what you can do is load all your students up. I believe when the students come up, their login name, it catches their login name, where they logged into the computer is what comes up down below that screen. That's how you know. What I was looking for is there's somewhere in here, there's where you load all the students. It does discover all the machines on that network for you tech people. Um, if your network, if, it want, if you want to discover machines that are across a subnet, there's a little bit of configuration you have to do, but it works fine. You just have to tell it to cross the subnets and the VLANs. Yeah. And then you, do you save, like, in a one-to-one -one at a high school where I'm going to have first hour, second hour, third hour, so I can save green one right. as a group of kids. Right. I do a discovery. Next group comes in. They open up. Anybody that's just save them. in my room that day. Right. Because they're, you're going to see the whole list. Of right. right. You can kids. create your classes. Okay. It's like land school. I think you just start scanning and then you can kind of like select them. them and then add them. And you and create sort your of class. Remembers that's them. what you do is you, yeah. you scan, it finds everybody, and then the teacher creates her class of everybody that's on the network. And then it's set. I mean, they can have that class then. And so then that first day would be some setup to do that. Yeah. So you go through and you select your. It's going to bug me now, though. Yeah, this is where, where I'm more technical than I'm a salesperson. I'm going to see where it's at. Yeah. <laughs> I want to you see can't let go, works. right? Because <laughs> yeah. I, I know it's in here. I think we have, a, I can't remember what it's called, the Mac. Oh, upper remote desktop? No. I can tell you what the icon is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Binoculars and stuff. And yeah, I that's upper remote desktop. Yeah, remote yeah. 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 desktop. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, but it's overwhelming for just, I'm the administrator, yeah. and I can see every kid's computer, but, you know, I, I can't sit at my desk all day watching those kids' computers. And, you know, with this, as a teacher, I mean, if you've got 30 kids in your class, or 40 or whatever, I mean, it kind of gets, that's all you do. Yeah. You know, you're watching your, your yeah. laptop going, okay, is John going to do this? It's really more of a, it's meant more for a spot check, and then use right. other tools if you want. But, you know, the re, um, he's not in here. Nickerson used the remote desktop because they have a one-to-one -one initiative, and they used it where every teacher had remote desktop because it was not expensive. You could use it in that way um, instead of just you have, <coughs> when Apple changed their licensing, it would be like $199 a teacher to do that. And so that's when they stopped <laughs> using that and were looking for something like this. Um, and what they did is instead of the teacher watching it, they had um, they had lab techs and the, the tech person for that building, um, which they, they had at that time, they don't anymore, <laughs> but they had at that time watch those screens instead of the teachers watching the screens. But you do have to be careful, you know, on our filtering, we have the same thing where you can see everybody's internet access and we have these reports. And you, as a tech director, you can get real wound up in that and not really focus on the important <laughs> important stuff. And 
and that is an issue. Is you don't want to, it's a good tool that I think really like the testing and the voting, that's why they work on that, working first is really the, the better part of it, and then you use the other part um, for spot checks and not get wound up in it. Well, my observation, if you don't mind, is just you kind of know who you need to keep an eye on. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And and it is overwhelming because you get this huge screen of, you know, uh, uh, uh. but it's like, okay, that old guy, he's kind of, you know, he's acting fishy, right? So you zero in on that and you go, busted, you know? Yeah, so yeah, that, to me, do. that's how it plays that's out. Yeah. yeah, you yeah. can't you, watch you, everybody. You know the kids that, that are going to be fine. Yeah. And you've got other kids that you've well, got to pull their screen up. Twice yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly, sure. right? Yeah. So that's how I've seen it play out. Well, and even when, when they're working on their own and yeah. you're trying to help other kids, you can project your screen to with them. the 30, so the whole screen yeah. is showing what everybody in the Use the shame factor. Doing. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, anybody can look up and go, hey, they're oh, that's okay. That's a good idea. Playing. Hey, I'm not that. Well, you're hey, well, hey, hey, really, like, because it's not big enough for you can see other everything. people's answers. Yeah. Well, well I found it's, yeah. it's, it's the psychology of the kids going, yeah, they yeah. can right. see what we're doing. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I got to be careful. I mean, and it keeps it, it keeps them on task. I mean, that's yeah. been my observation. Yeah. I like those awesome. kind of products. Yeah. So. Is everybody yeah. at the website? Yeah. Or the yeah. Mm -hmm. Just put that up on their, your smartboard and you're done. Your girlfriend or whatever. Self monitor. Yes. Yeah. Why? Yeah. And it was the same thing. You'll see the screens. But, you know, oh, okay. Oh, sorry. So they also let a special they're up to that because they think it would be something kids would be. Yeah, right. So like as I as a special ed teacher, my peer could email me say, Hey, check John's uh things like he's in record, I don't think he's doing what he's supposed to be doing. We could write a screenshot it. Right. And just like there you wouldn't have to get on him, you could because then you could control it so you could close out what they're in and at first one you know, and then they're going, Oh okay. yeah. <laughs> and so you don't usually even have to say anything. Yeah. Because yeah. they would catch on. Right? Right. And like I said, unfortunately, and I have to be honest with you guys, I was under the impression that they could see the iPad app screens. So when I was talking to the company uh, a week ago, and I'm like, well, that's not how, I, first of all, I was like, because I know how iPads work, I'm like, how are they doing that? <laughs> so there's some things that we can't do with our filter. Apple can't even do yeah, that. Yeah, like, how, how are they doing that? Uh, then when I talked to them a couple weeks ago, and I thought I was missing something in my, my configuration, they're like, no, you can't run the background apps. It's just what we thought. Um, so my original description did say you can control the iPads, but all you can do is the testing. I'm going to make that clear because <laughs> I never want to um, oversell something. But again, you can do the voting and the, and the creating the test, and you can monitor um, um, the Macs, freeze the screens, and do those other things. Now, what they have invented, let me go back out of here, what they are coming out with is a what they're coming out with is a web search a browser for iPads that you can see their activity on the internet. Mm. And so you load the web browser on the iPad on students' iPads and that you can see that they can capture. So what you would have to do, though, is you'd have to lock out Safari, because they could just go to Safari. But you would also know if they're not using the web browser that you told them to use, where you can monitor their use. Um, it goes frosted again, so you would know they, they left it. They aren't using it. That they aren't, they aren't where they're supposed to be. <laughs> um, so that they just came out with yesterday. Um, so I don't have it loaded and working yet. Um, the other thing that they're um, coming out with on the iPads, Remember so that. with that, you could only observe what they're doing on the web. On the web. So if they're just playing a, an app game on their right. phone, or on the iPad, <coughs> you, you could see just that. Know. But you could see that they left, because again, the, okay. the web browser would be frosted. So you, okay. you'd know they wouldn't be doing your assigned task on the web. So you would know that. You would know when they leave. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the other thing that they're doing, they're working very hard on, is um, with educational apps, is if they go to that educational app and ask them, will you let us drop in our code so we can monitor your app? And so far, only two of them have agreed. <laughs> um, but they're working with other companies on if you just let us drop a little bit of code in, in to the educational apps, then we can monitor those. Um, I think Moneyboard, is that one? Money? 
program. Spellboard. Yeah, there's a money board. It's really a cool program. Yeah. So, yeah. Spell, I think it's Spellboard and Money Board are mm -hmm. the two so far that have agreed. And they've just started, they just came up with that concept um, of working with the educational ad vendors. And so they asked me, because I've been around for a long time, okay, who should we go talk to? And they wanted me to talk to like Brain Pop today and some other oh, people yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. on what apps um, they could drop that code into. So then again, you would know if they were in an educational approved app that you've assigned to them or the web browser, and, and you would know if they left any of those. So if they were doing something else off task. So that will build throughout the years. Now, I also imagine, though, as those things <laughs> come about, they might increase their price, too. I mean, just to lay the groundwork, they might do that. Um, this is what it looks like on a Windows machine, is you can say they only can go to these particular websites. Um, if you use the new iPad browser, you can do the same thing there. You can say only these websites are available for you to go to. And the teacher can control that for classroom. And we kind of went through, I wanted to show you the screen instead of doing bullets, but to share the teacher monitor, control the student computers, you can co-browse the internet with the, again, with the, their new browser uh, for the iPad. You can co the teacher can co-browse with the student if you want to. Um, that really is better for like the elementary site, maybe especially. Um, they, you can have the students share with the rest of the class and then broadcast control video for all the students. So, quick question on the, so if they didn't block Safari, you would just be monitoring the, the frosted screen basically. Like, right, you, would, you would just see if they left your browser, Yeah. they'd okay. be assigned to them, and probably guess them that they went to Safari, know or another app. It doesn't tell you they went to Safari or that they went to another app, it just says they left yeah. the browser. Because one of our, the goals of our tech people is that they want them to be able to utilize them at home and things like that. Right. So, you wouldn't necessarily want to make them use this browser at home. They might want to use some. Right, right. And so that, that's what I told the, the developers yesterday. I said, most school districts I work with aren't going to block Safari. And that's when they said, yeah, but they'll know if they're using the browser or if they've left the browser. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. Because um, there's a lot of stuff, like you said, if you take it home or if there's some application that you're using that has to have Safari, because there are some that do. Okay. Uh, now, when the screen's frosted, can you freeze it from your computer? Yes. Yeah. So when, mm -hmm. they, when you know that they left, you can freeze it. Yeah, you can. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's with the iPad as well. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Okay. No, I don't. No, we think. No, we think here. I don't think you could. No. Because that'd be that background app again. Yeah. Okay. See, yeah. I just okay. don't think so there's that much management. It's when, when you leave. When you leave their application, just to go. You can't the control their iPad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, that works. Any other questions? Let's talk about the code browsing. Does the, when, this is when, what the, sorry. When, you're, when, yours, or when it shows the cross screen on your computer, does it cross theirs too, or do you have to? You no. have to, okay. There is, okay, on the iPads, page. how it works, there's just an actual app. Even on just the laptop, like Even on, sitting at the desk, oh. does it, for the, when it goes gray, yeah. does their screen go gray too? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. This is the, what the response system looks like um, on the teacher side, after students have voted or done the test questions or something. So you can see it has the students' login name, their workstation name, if they're still working on the test, what their score is so far, and what questions the so, and if you, again, if you use the clickers, it's very similar. <laughs> yeah, very similar screen. Very simple to use. What you can do is you can link, even with iPhones and iPads, there's a little student app that's on there, and you can link that student lap, that student app, it's linked to your teacher classroom, and you can actually have them say, I'm open that app, and it will report attendance. And you can link it to like Skyward or PowerSchool, those other types of things. So what it will do is you can actually just have them start their Bronix app, and it checks them in, takes attendance for you. So I thought that was kind of a cool thing. Um, 
you can separate students out. You guys, we were talking about at the beginning. Uh, students have different channels um, for your classroom. So if you have maybe a group of problem students <laughs> that you want to put on a different channel within your class that you've set up, you can do that so that you can send them a different mass message than <laughs> you send the other group <laughs> mass messages or a different test. So you have your classroom that you set up and then you have channels within your classroom that you can set up. So it depends on how, how you want to divide things up. So you can, then you can give two different tests. Like yeah, you, you can get a modified different. test or right. something like that. Because yeah. mm -hmm. I spend a lot of time modifying tests on CPS and trying to match them. And that is, I don't know if you can see, you know, I've talked about the iPads, but everything that works on iPads also works on iPhones. If anybody has an iPhone piece of it. Um, so this is what a multiple choice question looks like. Um, and they just touch the touch the answer. So you can do, also do all of that with the iPhones, not just the iPads. Does anybody here have iPhones? Yeah, so there's several one. districts that have oh, I do. iPhones in the classroom. So this is what the thumbnails of the student screens look like on the teacher iPad <coughs> control version. Um, so you can see, it's like you said, somebody said before, it's not big enough that you can actually read exactly what they're doing, but it's big enough to get an idea <laughs> of where they're at and what they're working on. I think projecting it on the screen is a great idea. That's, <laughs> that's awesome. The, um, what you have to do is you have to have a laptop of some type to run the iPad teacher app. So you have to have a, either a Mac or a Windows laptop as a teacher on the same network, and that's the main yeah. teacher control station. And then you load this app, and this app is linked to that teacher control station. Um, I went through and did that all yesterday on my, my machine. And it's very easy to do. <laughs> you just link it together and put a code in, and then you're controlling the laptop or whatever from your iPad. So do they have any kind of a trial period type thing? Yes, they do. That's what we're going to finish up with. Oh, okay. So. Yep. Yep. The link for the trial. <laughs> <coughs> um, like I said, if we're taking people, you use 95 less bandwidth than anything else that does this type of thing. Um, and I do have to say, in working with Nickerson, and we do their internet access, this remote desktop, that remote desktop, takes up a lot of bandwidth. <laughs> it chews up a lot of time. Um, doesn't take, it doesn't have very much memory requirements. Um, it does use what's called smart wireless. So if you're, which on iPads you would be totally wireless and all laptops are all wireless. It has a, you, I don't know if you've ever heard Cisco self-healing option, but it's, it senses how much of that wireless bandwidth is being used and it backs down its utilization of it. Now, what will happen is those thumbnail screens will come in slower but it's better that everybody else is getting, it's a low priority app, um, so it knows how to do that. Students can't disable Insight, um, especially on the Mac laptops and on the workstations, and the Windows workstations, they can't turn it off. Um, they can't, um, they can turn it off and on on the iPads, but they can't remove the app. They have a little security. And that, and that is the issue is that they can turn the <laughs> they, they can turn it off the iPad app so that's why you can't see the screen uh, they do have additional tools that you can purchase that monitors for abuse and you can set them up you were talking about it gets pretty involved but they do have some additional things that you can do with it um, here is the website just go to Victronics.com and there's an evaluation and they have 30 and 60 day evaluations. All I would ask is when you download it, um, tell them that you heard it from me, Susie at Two Trees. <laughs> and uh, that way um, they will send me that you've downloaded it and I, and I probably will call you and see how you liked it, what you think. And uh, the, it had, it's a cool tool. I think it has a lot of promise in the future. There's a lot of stuff you can do with it right now if you're thinking about it in the classroom. Um, and this is, like I said, I always ask two questions. How does it work and <laughs> you know, how the teachers can use it? And um, how much is it? In the lab, it's $599 in the lab, one-time cost, not yearly subscription. 
$599. For a building, it's $3,000 for a building. Um, it's really not that bad for what it can do. Uh, and you can use it uh, for, you know, it's just like in computer labs, it's all, it's a great tool. Is so that a one-time price, you said? One-time price, it's not a subscription fee. So no, there's no update costs or anything no. like that for us? They support for life. It's another reason why Chronix is an amazing company to work with. <laughs> they'll, take, they'll do the upgrades and everything for you. And they're that way with all of their products, with the deep freeze and the anti-executable You probably noticed that I really didn't mention their antivirus. It's not that great. <laughs> you know, I have other antiviruses that I recommend instead of theirs. Um, but I think this insight tool is, is very usable. So now, if they if they did download this and then that uh, the iOS change with uh, Apple did come forward, would that that would probably be an upgrade? Because okay. it, it will. But they wouldn't have to. We wouldn't have to pay for that. No. Okay. Yeah, but it would be an upgrade. And right now, you can download. How it works right now is you can download the apps now. So the the teacher assist app and the student app, you can download those free from iTunes and see what they look like. Okay. Um, the teacher assist can't do anything with it because it's not paired with the a real one. But if you download the demo, and you can download the teacher assist. You can see how it actually works. It'll be paired with your demo machine. Yeah, I don't know if our IT people already or our lady already has something, but yeah. Some and I haven't, I haven't talked to very many schools about this, so I think they're, again, I think there's, it's pretty new. I mean, they just came out with the iPad portion, just with the testing and the questions and stuff. They just came out with that in February. Okay. So it's, it's real new. So it's a one-time fee of $3,000, but are the updates free as well? Or do you it, it, will, it's, it will depend on how big an update it is. So if it's you know Windows 8 will probably be a pay for upgrade from what you purchased before. Um, the newest Apple iOSs will probably be a pay for upgrade. I kind of led you to believe it would be not pay for, but I, it'd probably be a pay for upgrade. Um, so it'd be an upgrade price between the two. Um, wow, minor sure. fixes and stuff are at no charge. You know. Do you know what the price of the update would be, or is that just for no? I I'm just guessing on that one, actually. <laughs> I'm guessing that they would even charge you for it. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm just covering myself. <laughs> That's not how they have been in the past. But I also know, again, as an app developer, it costs a lot of money to get an app developed. I mean, it, it's expensive. So, the uh, and we spent, as two trees, we spent about $50,000 to get an app that Apple won't let us load. So. <laughs> <laughs> we, we broke their security. <laughs> so. Yeah. Minor. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> we'll wait for them to break their security. Yeah. And <laughs> the um, Any other questions? <laughs> you said it's 3000 for a yeah. district. Is it for a building. For a building. And how much is it? 500 Five ninety nine for a classroom, oh, okay. or a cart, or a lab, or which would be as a as a school, you want people to go the two thousand dollar route, and it would be for right. an individual classroom, right? And I didn't bring district pricing. There is district pricing, but I didn't bring it. Okay. Yeah. Well, see, like our district, we have would be four schools, mm -hmm. so it would be it would be three thousand dollars per school, or would it drop? Because we have some schools or I think the break point is at five buildings. Okay. Yeah. And the reason you know, I've again I've been talking to them about this because oh, who was I talking to? It was a district where the high school it was Olpe. Where the um, is anybody here from Olpe? It's not that I'm going to talk about them. <laughs> they built their new elementary school right next to the new high school, and there's a um, covered walkway between the two. So I counted it as one building. <laughs> so it's all the same network. It's the same local area network, right, not wide area network. It's at. the same local area network. The, the school that I work at now is K through 12 on one building. So yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. So I have some brochures here. 
you guys would like any. Um, and if you don't mind, here, I'll just hand those out. I'll take a few seconds to talk about another product I picked up. Okay, that'd be awesome. Um, do I have elementary school people in here at all? <laughs> okay, this is why I, I didn't want to talk about it. <laughs> um, so at the same time I was talking to Phronix, I had another company call me. And it was a company that used to work with IBM's Writing to Read, and then they sold a program called Academy of Reading. Has anybody here ever heard of Academy of Reading? Yeah. Um, and now some of the people that were at Academy of, Re <coughs> Academy of Reading or, or Auto School are now at this company called Big Universe. And what Big Universe is, is it's K-8 online library books. And they're the real books, and they have quite a few of the read aloud books. So if you go online and you can look up, say, Beatrix Potter's Peter Rabbit, and it's a read aloud book that comes up on the screen and will run on iPads, anywhere you can run the internet, run the browser. Um, they've made, they had some books that were flash, and they removed, they removed the flash and made them so that they could run on iPads. It is up to 7,000 books. Over 50% of them are nonfiction, because that's the hardest thing to get kids to, <laughs> kids to read. Um, and it is $1,600 a year for building. So, number one, you get a lot of books added to your library. Number two, it is linked to Lexile. Um, so you can put it at the Lexile level, you can put in the ATOS level, you can put in if it has a test for uh, Renaissance learning. That's all part of it. It also has a write portion where they can go in, create a book, and put pictures in it, put graphics in it. Again, it's all online, so they can do it at home, at school, one to one initiative on the iPad, whatever. Um, the last thing it has is an online book club where they can interact with other people. Now, the responses are all predetermined, so they can't just write whatever in it, <laughs> but a teacher can choose to post their book, if, if they want to publish their book, to everybody in the community. The teacher can, or the student can say, I really liked, they can read somebody else's book that they posted and say, I really liked your book, or I didn't like it, or, <laughs> or whatever. They can, they have their bookshelf, or all the books that they've read. The teacher, and it has built-in tests too, like its own testing on every book, and so a teacher could go in pretty quickly, she can assign books from the bookshelf for the students to read, and then go in and see how they did on the test, on the books that they, re they read. Super uh, inexpensive, really easy to use, and you get a, a lot of augmenting your reading materials, and augmenting it outside of the classroom. And that's one of the advantages, in my opinion, of the iPad, is starting to get all the textbooks on your iPad, why not start getting your library on the iPad too, not just the textbooks, just good reading material. What was that the, the big universe or this one? The one with all the reading that you're just describing. That it's biguniverse.com. www.biguniverse.com. Yeah. And they've added more books since I had those for sure printed. <coughs> so that's another one that the problem is is that it, both of these uh, pieces of software there's not they're pretty simple to use so for, in my mind it doesn't take an hour to present <laughs> either one of them so I thought I'd bring them both up while we're here um, this is, it, what's the this is mostly you know, pre K to 8 yes K to 8 K to 8 <laughs> And a lot of it is nonfiction. I mean, the, but that, that's the yeah. cool part on getting to read science stuff and things like that. And it is major ed, um, education publishers that they're using. It's not, you know, I've, I've worked with other online books before, and it's all this stuff that you would Crap never, read. kids would never put at the library anyway, <laughs> or the library never would have bought for the library anyway. But th this is good material. So I have my. Uh, 
cards up here. If anybody wants to give me a call, ask me a question on anything, if you go to download, Big Universe also has where you can download and do a 30 day free trial. I had a ton of teachers got presented at the Mace Conference in March. I had a ton of teachers that downloaded it and I was able to get them extensions so they used it from March <coughs> to <go> the school <laughs> on the demo. Mm -hmm. And I've actually had some teachers over at Goddard that can't talk the district into buying it for them. So they just log in as a different teacher to keep reading the demo <laughs> over and over. <laughs> so you hear from Goddard. <laughs> I shouldn't be telling their secrets on them. <laughs> but, but, you know, maybe have your librarians or your teachers take a look at it. And, and we can extend the demos, if, you know, say we really are interested, but we really want to see how the kids react to it. And so if you sign up now and school doesn't, you don't get rolling until you can actually use it with the kids until September, um, just, I would just give me a call and we can extend your demo. Again, that's if you put my name in when you go, when you go to download the demo. Yeah. But it's great, another great company to work with. Really have the, the guy who started the company because his son had reading problems. And he was totally, he's a program <coughs> from India. <laughs> the president of the company and he went out there and he just felt like there wasn't enough good reading materials on the internet. He's like, this is ridiculous. This isn't hard to do. <laughs> um, it you know, comes more down to negotiating the publishing um, costs with the, with the publishers, the licensing costs with the publishers. <coughs> Any questions? Well, thank you guys. Really appreciate it. Let me experiment on you. <laughs>